yeah, the, the case is actually a rugby player injured in a scrum, and that matters. So, yeah, my, cha my charge here is to do slat repair in this individual, and this is an easy argument to make. So, uh, so rugby player, rugby is a, an aggressive sport and aggressive lifestyle, and there are lots of physical demands required of it, and slap lesions happen in these, these guys, but, you know, not all slap lesions are created equal, and biceps tenodesis is just not appropriate for all slaps. SLAP, as we know, is an acronym for super labrum anterior and posterior. It was four types. The reality is there are tons of different types of SLAPs, and that matters, and we need to recognize that and make decisions about how to manage these based on a lot of, a lot of scenarios, including clinical presentation and pathology. Uh, this rug play, rugby player's history is acu acute injury, um, clicking, catching, and popping, very likely a symptomatology and pain probably anteriorly. We know that slaps are difficult to diagnose. There are a variety of tests that have been described, but none is consistently diagnostic. In this uh, prospective level one case control study, uh, they looked at five well-established and commonly used slap tests and found that none of these tests provided any significant value toward diagnosing a slap. And even when they clustered these tests together, they still found no significant clinical uh, effect. And, uh, and we know that MRI is not particularly helpful either. This JBGS article, quote, concluded, non-contrast MRI is not a reliable diagnostic tool for type 2 slap lesions. So uh, x-rays aren't helpful. MRI may give us a little more information, but it's equivocal often as well. So let's talk about the different type of patients who get slap lesions because I think it's very pertinent to what we do for these patients. Throwing athletes, that's a unique group, a complex group. My advice, don't operate on them if you don't have to. The second group, overuse injury type patients. These are often older patients. Indistinct injuries often have bicep symptoms. That's not really our guy. Our guy's an acute injury. He's a non-throwing athlete. He complains of shifting, popping, and clicking, had a positive slap test and likely a positive MRI, and probably no significant biceps tendon symptoms after his acute injury. Well, I don't have rugby players in my practice, but I got plumbers. And my 29-year-old plumber fell onto his outstretched arm a lot like our rugby player probably did. Didn't have any symptoms before that injury, but continued to have problems despite non-operative measures and had a positive slap test on exam and a positive MRA. So this is my guy. Right shoulder, beach chair position. You can see that he's got significant changes of that posterior superior labrum, typical for what we might anticipate for a type 2 slap lesion. You can see the superior glenoid bone and look at his biceps, completely normal, rotator cuff completely normal, an acute injury, type 2 slap lesion. So I've debrided him and again you can see underneath this slap, you can see this exposed glenoid bone, I didn't do anything there and I think that's real. So if we look at the uh, literature on slap tenodesis, uh, slap versus tenodesis, in this uh, database, 46,000 patients with slap C, uh, ICD-9 codes, only 3,300 of them had isolated slap treatment. Half of those had repair. In this same study, over that 10-year period of time, there was a significant decrease in the number of slaps that were performed and an increase in biceps tenodesis. But when they looked at the data, they found no differences in stiffness or reoperations, whether you had a tenodesis or a slap repair. In this systematic review, 23 studies, uh, isolated slaps versus biceps tenodesis, again, no differences in post-operative scores. And yet another systematic review, five studies, slap repair versus biceps tenodesis, no differences in reoperation stiffness or functional outcomes. And we know that biceps tenodesis has its own set of unique complications, especially open subpack tenodesis. While the overall uh, uh, complication rate is low, the complications you can get are, are doozy. Deep infections have been described with open subpectinodesis. It's happened to me. Humeral shaft fractures have occurred with uh, subpectoral biceps tenodesis. It's happened to me. A, a muscutaneous nerve damage has occurred, been described. Brachial plexus injuries and even axillary artery injuries have been uh, reported with open subpectoral biceps tenodesis. Now here's my, here's my plumber ag again. So what I did, I didn't do a biceps tenodesis on him. I did a slap repair. 
Uh, it, I used two anchors, I did horizontal mattress sutures, and I repaired this slap lesion. I think it was an isolated pathologic entity in this individual after acute traumatic injury for which he had persistent symptoms that failed non-operative treatment. So there's our guy. He's repaired, and he went on to do very well, and plum, plum, plum. So in summary, slap lesions are difficult to diagnose. The history is very important. Physical exam is challenging. Diagnostic studies are equivocal at best. Uh, both slap repair and biceps tenodesis, I think, are effective for these isolated type 2 slaps. And remember, tenodesis is no panacea. There are some unique and very potentially severe complications that you would never see with a failed slap repair, for example. And not all slap lesions should be tenodesis. There are lots of different types. We've got to look at them individually. And those acute isolated type 2 lesions in non-throwing athletes, especially with no biceps tendon symptoms, can be repaired. Thank you.